we're gonna focus on the real stars of the show, and that's the animals. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Daytona, where the local time is approximately 9.08. In the morning, friends and family. It is Freedom Beater Friday. Just touched down after a short layover in North Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina. We are now in the sunshine state of Florida, and we're here for the National <laughs> Reptile Breeders Expo. Exposition. And we're gonna bring you along to the show, wow, it's Freedom dead in Breeder here. style. Welcome to Daytona. show and look at all these racks that somebody has to set up I don't know who's gonna set up all these racks but man I feel I feel really sorry for those guys because that's that's a lot of setup If you're ever helping down here, it's important you cut these things off the bottom. You can catch your foot on it and you take a hard fall on your face. They're like swimwear, built right. Sometimes you need a shot, you just gotta get high, man. Now, I don't mean to toot my own horn too crazy, but. I don't have a degree in graphic design. I like to think that these things came out pretty sweet. All set up and the show is in full swing. And I think this time we're gonna focus on the real stars of the show, and that's the animals. And the reason being, I think the last few episodes, I've last few shows I've been focused on you know, the family and the people who come to the shows, which are very important parts of it to me, but this time we're really gonna go around and take a look at the animals. Little pastel yellow belly clown, nice blushing. Let's see on the sides, these flames coming up. Beautiful guy. Looks a little bit better than his dad. Really takes away that pattern on the head, kind of washes it out a little bit. Really like what the yellow belly does. So uh, these are banana, banana mojaves that are 100% double hat for la uh, lavender clown. Uh, there aren't a lot of lavender bananas out there. Um, I think there's really only one other guy that's produced some uh, in the last year and uh, they really are supposed to look awesome as adults. A lot of people wouldn't think to combine lavender and banana, um, but from what I've heard, they really turn out cool. Um, and yeah, I mean, the double head grail, you can't go wrong. There's a lot of powerful genes in there. So I have all the pythons. They are probably my favorite of the snakes. It took me eight years to breed them. It took a long time to get going for whatever reason. They just need to cycle. It's not like an easy snake to breed. No. I didn't do any male to male combat. I just did one pair. And then I made babies last year and I made babies again this year. So I figure once I got going, 
but as far as snakes go, they're super, they have little scales and they're just super soft and just awesome. I don't know. And they get a good size, but not too crazy big. And they're just, uh, I don't know, what's a good word? Awesome, I think is the word to say them. Well, is, is it an N or a Z? Uh, I don't know, man. It depends how you look at it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a uh, six-year-old Madagascar spider tortoise. It's a captive-born animal. They're uh, it's a critically endangered species from Madagascar. They were imported into the U.S. in the early, around 2000, and I've got a large breeding colony of them. And uh, it's all, uh, they're all registered with the ACA stud books and the Species Survival Plan to try to reproduce enough of these in captivity in case that there's ever a chance to reintroduce them to the wild. And this is, uh, I've got a lot of extra males, so I brought a couple of extra males to, that I can maybe sell them to someone else that wants to have fun with these guys too. More rare species, you don't really see these at the shows too much, but every now and then they just sneak up behind you. And it's wearing a really nasty shirt. I don't know what it put on today, but what is that? Thing? I don't know, I pulled it right out of the dirty clothes hamper. It was all that I had to wear. Of course I'm going to represent you, man. <laughs> it's disgusting. <laughs> yeah, I'm Lee Evan. I'm doing do the Okatees and, and the morphs of Okatees. This is an Okatee corn. This is what I'm known for. This is the animal that comes from Jasper County. Okatee is a 600 acre hunt club. And in that area, years ago, that's where a lot of, you know, great snakes were found historically. This is an animal that I've combined with Okatee. This is the Tessera. This is the known codominant. And I've just about line bred these where they're nearly pure. You can see the great orange already. That's an animal that's going to be fantastic adult. And that's the other reason I like doing this is they color up so fast. This animal's gone through about four sheds. So it's already got a lot of its adult coloration. So it just makes it great. They pretty much sell themselves. And that's how I've gotten my name. I just got my new uh, Super Pastel uh, Ball Python. I'm from Claremont, Florida. And <laughs> I don't know. I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I really like authentic stuff like that, you know what I mean? It's, it's, people like to see real things happening, not, not fake stuff, you know? This is a black-headed python from Australia. We love the species and have been working with them since 2007. We love the iridescence on the head of the snake. That's what really drew us to want to be a part of this species. They have black tongues, black eyes, and look at the shine on that girl's head. <laughs> There's nothing like it in the market. They get a nice size. They stay fairly slender, but they can get up to eight, nine feet. This is Firenex bacillinotus, neotropical bird snakes, and they're one of the most variable snakes on the planet. They come in almost every color rainbow in Costa Rica, and they're constantly changing as they mature. So this one was incredibly bright at a three to four years old. Now it's about eight years old and it's starting to get a little duller. But the fact that they constantly change their entire life makes them kind of amazing. They go through an ugly tree branch phase at about 18 months old where they're just brown. So they hatch out looking like the little arboreal tree vipers, the eyelash viper moss phase. They go from this to just straight brown to some of the most bright colors out there. And I don't understand how this is gonna blend them into the, the forest floor, but it works. So this is a leucistic Colombian rainbow boa. They've got the real nice blue eyes. The albino Colombian rainbow boas, which are relatively new more. So real cool with the pink eyes there. This one's heterozygous. So it's carrying the gene for the leucistic. And the Colombian rainbow boas tend to be like, especially the leucistics are some of the most docile rainbow boas that I've worked with. It's like they almost realize they wouldn't survive in the wild. So they don't mind captivity at all. You can hand feed my breeders and stuff. They're just so chill. So we got a really cool donation for tonight's US Arc Benefit Auction. This is an Exanthic water monitor. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm not sure how good his color, actually lack of color, is show up, but really cool. So he's missing the normal yellow coloration that you see. He really likes my thumb. It's okay, little dude. So he's a black and white version of a water monitor donated by Michael Cole of Ballroom Python South. $2,500 critter we got here. Just really cool looking little dude. Super smart, real intelligent lizards. These big monitors are very smart. There's a good tongue shot for you. So again, he'll be at the night's US Arc Benefit Auction. If you go to any big reptile shows, Saturday night there's always a US Arc Benefit Auction. Sometimes funds go other places too. He's trying to climb up. Okay, so I know I said we're gonna focus on just animals today, and we are, but I wanna take one second to tell a story about this really awesome staff here. That thing is sweet, right? So every year at the Daytona auction, 
they auction off this staff to the highest bidder and the deal is they have to give it back so it can be auctioned again the next year and started doing it in 2003 and that's uh that's been a while now it looks like chris from sea serpents has got it for 2015 2016 and 2017 so we're gonna have to see if somebody can get it from him this time i'll check back in with you guys at the end and we'll we'll see who gets up we'll see who ends up with this staff no, it's a broad snout caiman. So these guys are pretty cool. Um, Laterostris, they're an endangered species from central and northern, or central and southern South America. We have the only animals in the, un in the United States that are actually breeding, and we have four bloodlines from them. Uh, they were almost gone in their countries of origin. The uh, folks in Argentina have made a really yeoman's effort bringing them back. Some terrific programs that they've got down there. Uh, they've got several thousand now in captivity, and they've got farmers who, during the wintertime, aren't really doing much with their cattle, and they're actually working with the caimans, making money off the eggs and so forth. Fantastic. So uh, awesome. they've, they've included the, the local people in a project, which is what we should do everywhere. Right. And, That's uh, the only way to do it. You have to get the locals the animals involved. Animals have, have to have monetary value or some kind of value to right. people, or there's no saving. Well, in the first world countries like the U.S., people don't realize that. You know, they don't get it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if it's your family eating or that lizard living, they, yeah. your family eats. Yeah. You know. Wow. And that's why you support places like Dragonwood Conservancy and all the work they're doing with these awesome crocodiles. So there's an issue with these guys interbreeding with the American crocs in Cuba, um, and hybridizing. And Terry's working with those guys and and seeing what they could do to reintroduce some bloodlines that he's got. Well, what we're trying to do in Cuba is we're trying to get sufficient funds to close the canals that have allowed the acutest to come up out of the salt water into the freshwater area of the Zapata. These guys have the smallest home range of any crocodilian on earth. They're found only in the Zapata area of Cuba and the Isle of Pines or Isle of Youth off the coast of Cuba. Uh, on the Isle of Youth there are only a handful of them left. We are sending animals back to Cuba to enhance their bloodlines and uh, try to get some better breeding going on at their farm with new blood. Right. This is your Noco crocodile. That's gorgeous. Also critically endangered. They're spread so thin that they can't find mates anymore. Uh, this is one of the giant species. The largest one ever measured was around 23 feet, which is as big as any of the biggest saltwater crocs. They are very gregarious if they're left to their own devices. They used to be found by the thousands basking on the beaches of the Orinoco River. Uh, now, just finding one is a huge chore. Yeah. You, can tr you can travel hundreds of miles and not see a single Orinoco crocodile. This little guy was hatched this year. And uh, actually, this little girl, this is a female. And again, the reason that we have tape around their noses is because the show requires it, not because right, we right. need them. These animals, it's one of the things we're very well known for is having animals that are completely tame. This is a banana puzzle. The puzzle gene came about in 2008 when a client of mine took a pair of pastels he bought from me and bred them together and got the puzzle gene in the way of pastels and super pastel puzzles. So a regular standard puzzle is um, somewhat interesting looking. Uh, let's see, if you haven't seen a puzzle, because they are hot on the scene now, this is a puzzle ball right here. Uh, so I've worked really hard to keep this morph high up. Like I said, I don't breed it to everything. People in this show have come up to me and said, man, where are all the puzzle balls? And I said, they're either sold or they're not made because I don't believe, again, in doing this. I don't believe in making every more. Brock Wagner with Brock Wagner Reptiles and I'm bending here with my buddy Winston Smith of WHS Reptiles. And today we're gonna talk about the uh, McKenzie Project. So I kinda wanna show the viewers and talk a little bit about it. This here is a baseline McKenzie, as we can all see. Looks a little bit uh, different uh, than a normal. People are asking me a lot about it. It's a pattern and color changing uh, mutation. This is the big showstopper, so what everybody loves. This is the GHI McKenzie. And as you can guys can kind of see, it changed the GHI so much. And you can see how it changed out the colors and brought those gold. And then you can see these, I guess, alien heads or hearts, whatever you want to call them, on the side of the GHI. It really enhanced them and made them more extreme. Burton Vlogs checking in here. I just picked up this amazing Coops Pastel from Vin Russo himself. Pulled it straight out of Poland. Such high pinks on this animal. Check it out. This is a 
what I think is a super hypo from two hypo genes. I used a hyposonorin and a salmon, which are both incomplete dominant hypo genes. So what I'm thinking is that this is the super form of both genes in that they're allelic. Not to sound too complicated, but I basically bred a hyposonorin het leopard to a salmon leopard. And some of those snakes came out really, really light, so I'm assuming that they are super hypos. But what it's done is it's, it's added a lot of color to the to the to the leopard, and it's also drawing out the patterns. The patterns are really complex and look great. So it's just a new twist on a hypo leopard, which is and using salmon. It's made them really orange and really colorful, and it's something I've been working on for many years. So. We have here right here an Asian water monitor, and these actually do get uh, pretty big. I think they probably top out, I think maybe like six foot. They are one of the bigger uh, monitors, but as you can see, this guy is very calm, very chill. But if you saw one of these in the wild, I probably would stay away because those claws and those jaws don't mess around. This is the uh, Monarch project. This is actually a Monarch pastel female that I hatched out last year. A simple recessive gene that came basically just out of nowhere. Rance Meyer bought a pair of pastels and it showed up. And so we've done a, I think I had a lot of fun with hatching this out and taking it to the next level. Last year, if you've seen any of my other videos, I hatched out a uh, Monarch genetic stripe clown, a triple recessive. So that was really an honor for me to do that. So we're still working with this thing. We're trying to get it in pies. We're trying to do some other thing with it, but very special morph here. Whew. Man, it's been a good show so far. I hope you guys are enjoying seeing all the cool animals. I'm having a lot of fun going around filming them. I think that we need to take a small break though and visit in and see what's going on with Mr. Noah Sage. Hi. Hi. Let's go horizontal. I was just talking to Noah about making something for the Noah Knows. Hi, Daddy. Hey, Mr. Noah Sage. What you doing, my guy? You having fun? Oh, you gotta keep it horizontal, my guy. You gotta turn the camera back. No, you gotta turn it the other way. Why don't you try? Why don't you try sitting up? It'll be better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey Noah. Hey Noah. What? What do you know? What about black bears? That some black bears are white so that they can catch more fish. They're white? So they can catch more fish? Yeah. What? Yeah. Some black bears are white so they can catch more fish? Yeah. That's crazy. I never heard of that before. All right, I love you, bud. I'm going to see you soon, okay? Okay. So have fun over there. Can I talk to Eli? Sure. Hi, my guy. Hi, Daddy. Hey, Eli. What? What do you know? Um... Rhinos. What about rhinos? Yes, they're really fast. They're <laughs> it's a Sun Glow uh, IMG. It's a paradox. It's not paradox, usually it's a genetic. Um, so I'm not sure if this is going to be an albino or it's going to be a head for albino. You really don't know until you breed it. Um, but there was uh, actually four born in the same litter. It's pretty neat. Now I got some B roll. the man who ended up with the staff in the auction. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. So you're gonna have to show up next year to see if you can take it for him. Because Chris had it for three years. You're gonna three try years to get it in a row. next year? Three years in a row. You're gonna try to get it next year? We're gonna year? take it three you're years in a row. You're taking three years yeah. in a row? Oh, snap. Yeah. Be, there's, there it is. You gotta show up. You wanna see if you can get this thing from Bob? Good luck. Nice, man. So this is a Spider GHI Freeway, as far as I can tell. 
um, and this was definitely my favorite thing that we hatched out of this clutch. Uh, it could possibly be Inchi GHI Spider Freeway, but uh, I don't know. We're just gonna have to raise it and see. Uh, so I know that most of this day we're trying to focus just on animals, but it's hard to come to a show and focus just on animals because there's so many people and so many cool people to meet. Ben Morrill here has got a thing called Rare Genetics Incorporated. He's working on, you're gonna work on like cracking the genome for ball pythons, is that part of the thing? That's part of it, he, yes. He's on the way, he can already determine which snakes are, let me get the card here. There is already testing available for DNA printing, DNA fingerprinting, and parentage testing for $20 to $15 to $20 for a genetic test. So, I, this is something I've been thinking about a lot and previously, so it's, exci it's exciting to me to yeah. see this move, somebody moving forward with some of this stuff, so. Yes. So, uh, it's fun. Congratulations. I'm excited. Yeah, Thank congrats, you. Good job, man. Keep up. Appreciate I'm, it. I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes to, so. Me as well. I'm gonna get both of you guys in. You already got <laughs> These guys, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to these guys. They really helped me out when I first lost my camera equipment, sending me a bunch of equipment so I could keep recording and not, not, not be able to, oh, I'm doing double negatives, triple negatives. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for helping. <laughs> well guys, show is basically over. You remember all the racks we set up? This 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 is what's left right here. These are all the racks that are coming back home. So <laughs> that's that's a lot of racks. I'm kind of mind blown. I, I can't imagine. Look at look at there's like we had like 50 something racks here. There's like four coming home. What is that? Four? Five. Five racks coming home. That's that's not very many racks. It was well done. I hope you guys really enjoyed this vlog. I hope that the animal coverage was up to par for your standards of animal coverage because that's really what I was trying to focus on this time around. And I did get several really, really cool interviews for Triple B TV that'll be coming up after we finish the Pomona interviews. So we're talking about a while from now, but I'm talking about some people that I've been looking forward to interview for like we had you know, Tom Crutchfield, Eugene Bissett. I mean, it was, it was really cool. So, Look forward to that coming on Triple B TV. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend doing whatever you're doing. And man, thanks for coming along, guys. It's been a good time. And for everybody that came over to say what's up and say hi and give hugs, and I appreciate every single one of you. And thank you guys for making this all work out so well for everybody, because we're having a good time and we're gonna keep on doing it. You guys, take care of yourself, take care of each other. Zooming in right when that happened. It was like kind of epic. <laughs>